Uh, you are a world traveler and have spent significant time in other environments around the world. How has this privilege changed your perspective about our own xenophobia in the United States? Well, America, you know, is it a melting pot? A pot? What is it? You know, a lot of our history has been about assimilation, and that is um, there. When I think about it, you know, I think about it because I spend so much time at Second City, and we think about ensemble and like what makes a good ensemble. And you know, a good example is that like if you're doing a main stage show at Second City or whatever, it's like you don't want six Chris Farley's on stage, like. You want one Chris Farley on stage or one Bill Murray, you know, or one Tina Fey. Um, if it's 16 Tina Fey's, it doesn't work. So true diversity is, is in all of the ways in which we would understand it. And you want everyone to be as unique as possible uh, in terms of the, the, an ensemble sort of thing. But that would, that would reflect writ large out to groups, to companies, and to the country as a whole. Um, that, and this is completely idealistic and probably never going to happen. But my firm belief to answer it is, I think that diverse groups have the best chance to make, to do the best work. And I think in Haiti where Tim gets to, where it's him, he's there and he's just trying to bring in his expertise and he's essentially bringing like a connection to some funding. And then Matt, who's one of the translators, who's now a project lead for their organization, Gilbert, who's the guy who comes on sort of halfway through, like you start to see a truly um, sort of a diverse sort of experience there which I think is encouraging. When you see the Jack in the first scenes for, in the film versus the Jack that picture locked the document years later, how much of him is still with you and how did he help you get the film done? So we made a choice. I was always against putting myself in the film and I was fighting against it very, very, very hard, partly for I didn't want to distract. It was mostly I didn't want to distract. And also there's so like some how I came up understanding and learning documentary was less like you just don't do that. And so there's partly just like a don't try not to do that sort of thing. And then coupled with I don't want to distract. And then we made a decision that although Tim is the main character, we also are following other people, Sam Police, you know. And we also needed to find a way to bring in the experts because early screenings showed that people a no one knows where haiti is i remember I, my first trip someone said to me so how many time zones away are you like because they think haiti in the mind is in africa it's in sub-saharan africa and it's you know it's that and it's one time zone for those people watching who don't know it's just below america i mean it's right here it's eastern time zone um and so we used we decided like okay we have to use jack as the way to do buy-in because i can be and, and then also I'm allowed to be the sort of fool, sort of, and just go through the experience of, and so I'm playing a heightened version of my own experience, but it is accurate. Like I came in, I was like, I legitimately was like, they're gonna build a school and that's gonna help fix Haiti. I mean, that was probably something I said out loud, completely believing it. And that's who I'm sort of also then making the film for. I'm, it's for the person, because you'll talk to people. I've had lots of, over the 10 years I've made this, uh, it's funny because the film's coming out and I'm trying to like remember everyone I've ever talked about the film and I'll be like asleep and wake up and I'm like, oh my God, Kim, 2013, I talked to her and I like write myself a note and be like, hey, the movie's done. Um, and I think what I probably would, if I'm giving myself credit for anything, it's that I just, and Tim too, is that we just stuck it out. Because usually what happens is you come in, you say, okay, we're gonna give everyone in this village mosquito nets for free. You come back a year later and you realize that no one's using mosquito nets as mosquito nets. They're using them for nets for fishing right? Because that's actually documented as happening, not in this village, but in, in Africa. And, and, and you look at it, you're like, well, this didn't work, you know? So I just give up. And a lot of people walk away. And part of this film is like, you can't walk away. I think the number one thing that we are prescriptive about this is you can't walk away. And that's why Tim, at the end, does what he does, is he also realizes, like, if I'm actually serious about what I said I was going to do, that initial kernel of, like, what got me here, it's partly just about stripping away. The film is like stripping away. Like, why are we doing this? Is it because we feel bad because we're white people? Is it because we feel bad because we're Americans? Is it because we want to help? But why do we want to help? Who gives us the, who gives us the right to go into someone else's house and help them? Like, and just sort of continues to strip it all away. And I think it's getting to the spot where it's like, but we do want to help other people. And helping other people is the most human thing you can do. It's the best thing you can do. It's the best version of us. 
Okay, uh, final question. The conclusion of the film is about lessons learned. Personally, how important are those lessons to you and how have they changed your life? It seems almost trite now to say that making this film has changed my life because it, I mean, it's, it's done more than that. I, I, I probably couldn't, spe I couldn't say specifically or even quantify how much, how different I am from having the experience of making, you know, this film. And then the lessons learned thing in terms of my own personal, in the film, again, it's like Sebastian says, you know, Hades, like a plate of spaghetti, which every single time you, um, you're pulling a noodle and every single time you think you're reaching the end of the noodle, you realize it's tied to another noodle and you're pulling and you're pulling and you're pulling. And I think Haiti is an extreme example of that, but it sort of has changed the way I view any problem, like every single thing and, under, and trying to understand like this is all way more complicated and intertwined and interconnected than I think probably a younger version of me or the, the, in the multiverse, the version of me that never made this film would have gone for every time you pull on the string, you're going to get connected to another string that can lead to paralysis, right? It's like, well, I'm not going to start pulling on this because I'm going to be pulling forever, you know? Or I think it's trying to find a way to pull it in a way that, in a way that, you know, is meaningful or helpful or additive. Um, there's a bit of energy in this movie where it's just like, well, just F it, you know, it's just like, this isn't, it's how it's never going to work, you know? But then that comes back to that guy who I was at the beginning where it's like, it has to work. There's gotta be a way we can figure this out, you know, because there's people who need help and there's people who have too much in the world. And there's people who don't have enough. And like, we didn't say it, but it was implied early. And then we explicitly made the decisions. Like we are not, this is not a normal social activism documentary, which is like, here's a problem. Here's what you can do about it. Write your Congressman or do whatever they want you to do to fix this problem because I don't even believe in that. I think actually, I think those are arguably more hurtful because they have to rely on, again, perpetuating a narrative because it's storytelling, it's entertainment. We have to try to find a way to make it interesting and you lose that nuance to it. And I think part of what we're saying is that it's all about the nuance. Like what, what normally gets cut out of this movie if someone else makes it, we're leaving in. And part of the reason, again, to go back to your first question, why it took so long is because like, every other version of this movie ended unsatisfyingly, but finally we were able to find the way where it all comes together. It's like, how do you make a film where if essentially everything you just watched is a waste of time and energy, um, but you feel like you got a lot out of it, you know? Right. And that's, you know, that's sort of what we're trying to get to. And I think when we think about problems or, or, or lessons learned, I think that's it. It's, it's really about like, how do you approach it the first time with just a slightly different mindset towards what you're doing. This is Patrick McDonald for HollywoodChicago.com. Copyright 2022.